Um, this reminds me, um, I've always been really curious about trauma, right? And that's always the area that kind of caused me. So the thought that I just had or the question I just had is, I know that when we do higher brain living or SCM or whatever we're doing and the healing evolving, it deals with trauma on a like a major level, like an overall. Mm -hmm. All right, it's kind of like you know sifting and releasing. Yeah, it gets to some of the physiology of right, the trauma. Right, and it's not yeah. specific. It's like generalized. Mm -hmm. It's whatever you know the per each yeah. individual goes through in, in entirety. Mm -hmm. How? Uh, I, I don't want to say like it debunks going into in, like another modality that can target specific trauma, like for example, uh, what's coming up now, transpersonal psychology or something like that, where they have a more spiritual therapist that can kind of break, guide, break things down and guide the person through specific really hard traumas. So I'm thinking the integration of both can only help someone, right? Like well, that's how far into the SCM program have you been? None. I'm yeah. only at HBO, right? Okay. Well, that's dealt with that's, in the SCM okay. program. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So SCM is basically bringing it from that. Well, it's just that there's modules or summits in SCM that deal with shadow and that deal with uh, incomplete uh, level or structure, psychological structure development. And often those, sh often the incomplete structure development, psychological structure development or the shadow is often a result of trauma. And in some ways, if we expand the definition of that, I would say that almost all of it is because almost all of what we deal with in life that has an adverse effect on the organism is, it, it, it's the same process, it's just the magnitude of the process, right? And so if like we we're used to thinking of trauma as, you know, like large scale events, like a woman is raped, that's outrageous trauma that their, um, their nervous system both and by now I hope everyone knows I'm talking about upper left and upper right right the the upper left being the mind the consciousness the mind or we could even say psychology put in the upper left the upper right being the object physiology brain nervous system right so what happens then is when this comes in I'm being raped there's the 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 there's not flexibility built into either the neurological system or the cognitive capacity, which are corollaries, right? So the brain doesn't have the flexibility and the higher level capacities to sort it, make sense of it, dissipate it, integrate it, nor does the psychology. Right, the mind can't handle the cognitive bandwidth isn't there, and so what happens is is that the event is in complete dissonance, or or uh, there's no functional fit for what's happening in reality to the processor of reality in here, and so reality and the ability to process reality don't commensurate. There's no way to make that fit this. And when that happens, it is in some way, as a survival strategy, there's a repression, right? There's a disassociation, there's a repression, there's a disconnect, and there's, and all of that has, and this is what we bring to the table that's not well understood in most, most of it, particularly in most shadow work, is that there's always a physiological component. If you understand integral theory, that's not, not optional. That's, there's always a physiological component. And so that, that physiological component causes the higher brain to completely check out from it because it cannot consciously process it. And so it ends up 
which means the higher mind checks out of it. So it's driven then into uh, uh, the unconscious mind and the lower brain. And then it's put in a, a feedback loop that is walled off the event that there was never the physiological or cognitive capacity to process. And that then over time, right, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful evolutionary adaptation that has a very important short-term survival advantage. And it has lethal long-term um, and devastating long-term um, potential. Because now what's happened is that we're holding on to energy that is distorting. Now that energetic distortion with the lower brain walling the, this event that both has a psychology and a physiology now locked up and locked out from awareness. But it's not neutral, right? It's just, it's like in a holding pattern and over time, it, it has, something has to happen. You can't just hold it in there, right? And so one of the challenges is, is what it does then is that since all information that comes in to us is first processed through the lower brain, and now the lower brain is holding on to an aberrant psychology and physiology. Now all of reality is being filtered through this traumatic induced filter. Which means that we will perceive the world no matter what happens through that trauma filter. And it will cause us to behave and really not productive ways and it will cause us to see the world in not productive ways and over time it will create all kinds of weird stuff that happens in the physiology that happens in our life and so the reason HBL and SCM that even deals with it more like overtly it are so powerful is because very few things are really good at understanding the physiological element of it. Nor good at understanding that both the cognitive bandwidth and the neurological flexibility have to increase to be able to process something that could not be processed with the way the neurological flexibility and bandwidth existed when it came in. So the potential what I believe is can be quite even harmful in a lot of therapeutic settings is this idea of bringing someone's shadow up trauma up without first providing them increased neurological flexibility and increased cognitive bandwidth and if it comes up before that and that's why in no, none of these technologies of SCM they're meta technologies. Not, nothing that happens in SCM and HBL puts the cart before the horse. The very first thing that happens in HBL is energy flows to the higher brain and it increases neurological flexibility. And you will notice people's cognitive bandwidth starting to expand. They start to see the world differently, relate to the world differently. And now in HBL, what happens is the system itself, the intelligence in there, recognizes that there's a problem. Sometimes it can see it for the first time because it's been disconnected from the higher centers of the mind and brain. And now it starts to find it on its own and it starts to want to liberate it. And in SCM, there's a, a, even a more designed element of that to be able to unpack the psychology and physiology and use that energy as fuel for growth by pushing it into the salutogenic response and having that energy repurposed 
into that evolutionary energy that's flowing through them so that that those old wounds actually get to become fuel for growth and evolution. But the core elements are, and this is why it, what, this ha is a whole different game changer, is that if all you do is make someone deal with their trauma, their shadows, but don't provide them a higher brain and mind to do that, it's, it's best case scenario is it's not going to be sustainable. Worst case scenario is you overwhelm and flood the system again with what it couldn't deal with before and it represses it even further and deeper than it did the first time and it causes even more and greater problems.